Right now, the Solar Race 2023 is taking place in Kazakhstan. This year's race features a Bajaj Maxima tuk-tuk with a Slavanka combined winding motor. It's not just a race. It involves only the sun and solar transport. You can charge the motors and actually move only as long as the sun is shining. Fortunately, there are rarely any problems with the sun in summer in Kazakhstan. But they do happen. And the capricious sun has already affected the course of the race. This year, the rules of solar race became more difficult. The rules have changed this year. Now you can't just scatter panels around your solar car, like cards on the ground, and collect solar energy. This year, the rules are that the solar panels must be on the structure of the solar car. And the solar car must not rest on a jack or supports when stopped. It must just stand on its wheels. That's the requirement. It took our team a month to prepare. The race started on June the 11th in Uralsk. And we will finish it on June 27th in Almaty. The length of the route is 2700 kilometers, but they still have to go through quite difficult conditions of the Kazakh desert – wind, sand, heat. Minor damage is simply unavoidable. Let's get acquainted with the team. Vladimir Popov, our pilot and project investor. Oleg Kovalev, our mechanic and chief engineer of Production Association Resource. And this is the main team member, Tuk Tuk Bajaj Maxima with the motor with combined windings Slavanka DA90, manufactured by ASPP Way High. On the day of arrival, all the race participants were getting to know each other. Look at it, they are rivals, but there is clearly an atmosphere of mutual support and understanding. Our team has very strong competitors. The guys in the tuk-tuk will have to try really hard. Start day. The locals are taking an active interest in the solar car race. And they already have their favorites. We started at 3 pm. Started from the village of Melovy Gorky near Uralsk. Covered 35 kilometers and adapted to the conditions. It was very cloudy. The solar panels could only give 300 watts plus a gusty wind. We tried to keep the tuk-tuk moving vigorously, but at the same time not to drain the batteries too quickly. As a result, the batteries were dead in three hours. And at 6 pm, Moscow time, we stopped. Of course, the guys were overwhelmed with emotion, but they discussed all the mistakes of the day in the evening. Soon we will see what conclusions they drew. That's it. Until the next meeting with the sun. On the second day, we set off from the village of Usunkoy in Kostanai region. The sun came out from behind the clouds, but it caused overheating of the solar panels, so we had to make a stop to cool the solar panels and increase the efficiency of light conversion to electricity. Plus, a gusty wind, like on the first day did not add to the ease of the journey. But the experience had already made itself felt. So we were moving at a speed within the limit of 20 km per hour. We had discharged the batteries by 6.30 pm and we covered 77 km. We drove 35 km, made conclusions from our mistakes, we discussed them in the evening. And today we've already covered 77 kilometers. Although the weather was about the same, the sun was shining very little. But when it was shining, I was moving at a speed of 26-27 kilometers per hour. That is, when there were no clouds in the sky. 
maybe when the sun is directly above us, further along the road, it will be even faster in motion, because our horizontal panels are not tilting. Maybe it will be even quicker. In fact, that's a result too, because we are the heaviest competitors in this event. The weight of our tuk-tuk is about 700 kilos. Day 3 was epic. We decided to start as soon as the sun allowed us to move. We set off as early as 8 am without waiting for the batteries to charge. Do not forget that a tuk-tuk with solar panels requires careful maintenance. In addition, sometimes you need to eat and rest. Our pilot Vladimir moved at a speed of 10-15 km per hour and tried to spend the energy as efficiently as possible. We stopped on this day only at 7 pm and covered 76 km. On the fourth day of the race, our team had to stand for a long time to charge two batteries. It became clear that two batteries was a mistake after all. Too long charging and too much weight. This day we were not able to leave until 11.20. At 2 pm both batteries were already discharged. Vladimir made a lucky decision to fully charge one battery. So at 6.50 pm we hit the road again and drove another 24 km. We rewarded ourselves with a tasty dinner in the canteen and managed to have some rest. We agreed that a good meal and a good night's sleep is the best thing you can do to regain your strength. On the fourth day the journey was over only at 10 pm. During the day we covered 68 km in total. On the fifth day the goal of our team was to cross the threshold of 100 km a day. And they succeeded. They covered 114 km of the route during the day. In total at this stage the team has already covered about 300 km. It is not little, taking into account the conditions of the route. However, the main thing is ahead, and the guys now need your active support. They already know how to correctly calculate the time of charge and select the optimal speed regime. I must say this is the first experience for everyone. This is the first time the Tuk Tuk has been converted for solo racing. The plan was to put as many as 4 batteries on it but even two turned out to be too many in the field. Don't expect everything to go smoothly the first time. Today we drove 114 km. Yes, we made it over 100 km. Finally. But I can't say that I was completely satisfied with the result. Because that's not all we are capable of. Today the problem was figured out and partially solved. I drove about 60 km without this problem. The brakes jamming. But then it resumed again. Apparently the master cylinder, which is located in the cab, was jamming when the brakes were applied. And it was not kicking back. So it slightly pressed the brake shoes. And thus braked us. That's the story. We didn't discover it right away. Because from the very start, there were a lot of other problems. And as they came, of course, they were solved. The wind was blowing hard and it was impossible to understand the reason for the braking. I thought it was the wind that was slowing us down. And yes, it was the case. But it turned out to be more than that. There was another problem. Then I hit the brake pedal hard and apparently the master cylinder jerked back at that point. 
Then came a gentle roll, and I was flying 25-30 km per hour. Uphill it was 15 km per hour, whereas before I was just going straight ahead at 15 km per hour, though it was against the wind, but still. I felt lightness at once. If tomorrow the weather is the same as today, we'll arrive in October. Because 112 km are left to it, according to the pointer. And today we covered 114 km. Besides, not all areas were easy to drive, and thus we are in time for the day after tomorrow's start of the second leg. June 16th. The sixth day of the race was particularly difficult for the guys. June 17th is the start of the first competitive stage with the finish line at Baikonur launch site. The day before, our team had some problems with brakes and battery. The guys managed to solve them. So now the Tuk Tuk's performance has been improved, and the guys can cover one and a half times as much distance in one day. On the sixth day, they left the village of Kopta in the October region after charging at 10.40. Here they are, moving to October. The charge of one battery lasts for about three and a half, four hours of driving. Thus, the way for a day has to be divided into two stages, from charge to charge. Nevertheless, using one battery was the right decision. You can see that the speed is now up to 27 km per hour. The first thousand kilometers have been covered. Until recently, it seemed difficult to achieve. So, our team is in October and preparing for the first competitive stage. A little bit about the history of the race. Most of the participants this year are experienced racers. The leaders of this race also took part in Solo Race 2022. Last year, the weather conditions and peculiarities of solar transport forced the organizers to adjust the rules during the race taking into account the situation. This year, the vagaries of the weather and minor incidents on the way have already led to the same result. The start of the first competition stage was postponed twice. However, last year's participants are determined to take revenge, especially since the experience already allows them to quickly cope with emerging situations and easily take the lead. As for the tuk-tuk, it has a special position in this race. As you already know, this mode of transport is fully adapted to participate in the solar car race for the first time. Many decisions have to be made right on the way. A risky experiment from start to finish. Decided to participate in a race on a tuk-tuk is already a victory, friends. The motor with combined winding Slavanka DA90 made by ASPP Way High which was installed on the Tuk Tuk Butach Maxima especially for this race, shows itself very well. Just as for the motor and the Butach Maxima Tuk Tuk itself, this is the first time for our pilot Vladimir and mechanic Oleg to participate in a race. And you have to compete with the leaders straight away. That's what today's heroes look like. It's a great test for all participants, especially for the main competitor, Slavyanka Mota. We think it's a great test for every participant of the project Dune of Motors. The result is there. Dynamics is impressive. In the first half of the day, they already cover 105 kilometers, and that on one battery. Let's wish our team a complete victory in this race. <laughs>